everyone, and welcome to TFYLP, Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure. I am your host, Deron Land, a.k.a. Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Headmaster Dawn. Hey, everybody. And Jim Black, unmute your mic. And he still can't... <laughs> He's waving vehemently for you audio listeners. He's still trying to talk, but we're not hearing anything. Unmute your mic. I think Still, he's playing. That, yeah, he's messing with us. Hey, Jim, I have your address, and I can send you a Massey attack of first class in two days. Yes, please. please. Do. Oh, my God, there I am. Hi. There we go. There <laughs> we go. My, my computer went into total dirt mode right as soon as you went live. I was, the Chrome stopped responding. Windows stopped responding. You had, like, no. You had, you had the PEBCAC error. The problem exists between keyboard and computer which is the user <laughs> you had the pep cake here yeah. <laughs> so hi hi this is T- tfylp the transformers podcast uh broadcast weekly on youtube uh at 8 p.m uh, eastern time uh, we talk about transformers related topics and uh whatever's uh really floating our boat that particular week uh hot topics if you are new to the podcast welcome um and uh if you are a returning viewer or a listener uh thank you for joining us again this week um i want to point out our sponsors if you're watching us on youtube our sponsors are over to my uh, what would that be my left i guess <laughs> um CapturePrey.com, great toys, great prices, great service. CapturePrey.com, where you can save even more with orders of $150 or more with free domestic shipping. And if you are international, like those uh, of us who are in Canada, uh, you can get uh, discounted shipping on orders of $150 or more. CapturePrey.com. And if you're watching this um, the weekend of July 15th, then... Well, you're probably going to be in Canada at TFCon USA. Uh, hence why we're a little bit shorthanded. Uh, Megamus is there. Uh, Sergio's there. Uh, Daniel's there. <laughs> so we're a little bit shorthanded. Um, also, this is a pre recorded uh, episode uh, because um, I'm not going to be available the night that this airs either. So, you know, here we are recording, and but still got the, uh, the episode. Um, mm-hmm. Also, go ahead. Because we want to make sure you get your weekly dose of TFYLP. Because if you don't, riots will start, panic in the streets, dogs and cats living living together. together. Yeah, yeah. Total pandemonium. 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 Massy massy hysteria? Yes, massy hysteria. hysteria. (laughs) But if you're in uh, TFCon uh, Canada right now uh, and uh, you're there, make sure to stop by the Capture Prey booth. And also, you can maximize your collection while minimizing your costs with Mega Toy Fan. He is there as well. Uh, stop by his booth and mention TFYLP. Uh, he may give you a kiss. He may give you something. You never know. Uh, he may lick oh. you on the on the cheek. Uh, Boy, that's 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 the definition of incentive right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you can tell Megamus that you expect your kiss. Where's your kiss? <laughs> he may be happy to oblige. Uh, asterisk uh, yeah. on the maybe <laughs> maximize your collection while minimizing your cost with mega toy fan uh you can also find mega toy fan at other uh, popular robot and toy conventions year round uh he was at pete's robot convention a couple uh weeks ago and tfcon canada this week uh and coming up in a couple months he's going to be at tfcon usa in washington dc as well as well several of us as well so yeah. so you know, those of us who couldn't make it to TFCon Canada will be trying to go to TFCon uh, Washington. I don't expect to be there, but, you know, you never know. Something may what, come when up. When is that again? I thought, I thought you were going with Orson. Uh, most likely not, because it's it's a work schedule uh, oh, issue. Okay. Um, and also money, uh, but mainly work schedule. Um, when, when is uh, Washington again? Uh, September. It's the last weekend of September, first weekend of, Oct- of October. Yeah. Oh, okay. So pretty far out. Yeah. Well, not uh, that I might far. Not have a couple of months. Then. 
but I don't have vacation time, so uh, if I do, uh, it will be just as my vacation time is starting because that'll be like my one year anniversary around that time. And I don't want to burn my vacation time as soon as I get it, you know. So, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Also, uh, check out rippedapparel.com. Uh, and if you uh, find an awesome shirt or several awesome shirts or coasters or hoodies or whatever you want to buy at uh, Awesome Ripped Apparel, uh, make sure on your checkout you enter in the promo code TFYLPPOD, all capital letters, and you will save 10% on your order. Uh, thanks to TFYLP and Ripped Apparel. Uh, TFYLP Pod is the promo code that you enter in. Uh, 10%. That's that's a good discount. Uh, and also, if you love TFYLP and love what we do on this show, you can go down uh, there at the bottom of the screen, or if you're listening, uh, go to patreon.com slash TFYLP uh, and uh, donate a little bit uh, each month to us. Um and it helps keep the lights on, keeps the server's bill, uh, server bills paid, uh, helps us upgrade whenever we can, uh, and uh, it goes for a good cause. You know, we can continue this podcast. We've been going for so long, and it just got to the point where this is the uh, the only way we could continue. Um, you know, it's uh, all the free options are kind of dwindling now, unfortunately. Uh, making uh, making a good quality podcast is becoming harder and harder. Um, so uh, we want to uh, truly uh, thank each of the people that uh, Patreon to us each month. Uh, we, we love you from the bottom of our hearts. And uh, without you, we couldn't be here. Thank you. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about some uh, uh, current event things. Um, you know, the, but we're going to put a little spin on it. Um, you know, we're going to make it to where it'll be at least interesting if you listen to this, you know, two years down the road, six months down the road, five years down the road, doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it may be pertinent then as it is now. Uh, we're going to be talking, going around the table here and talking about uh, concerns or thoughts that we have regarding the Transformers franchise. Uh, as it is right now, um, you know, from different perspectives, uh, each one of us may have something that we're thinking about that, you know, is like, you know, that, that kind of bothers me or, uh, or I'm concerned about that, um, you know, and maybe talk about ways uh, that uh, Hasbro, Takara, the fans, uh, how we could change uh, how we look at things or how things are done, um, you know, things, uh, things of that nature. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, I'm going to start it out with the elder citizen of TFYLP, <laughs> Headmaster Don. Uh, what is at the forefront of your mind whenever it comes to the Transformers franchise right now? Anything hot topic that you're thinking of? And I'm not okay. talking about the, the trendy clothing store. Right, right. I used that joke a few weeks ago. Uh, um well, I was going to, when you brought this up, I was going to say and talk about the distribution. But yesterday I went out uh, visiting visiting uh, some friends and such, and I found, as you can tell behind me, Cybertron, the uh, re-release recolor of Primus from our from uh, Cybertron. I found that the I found the toys are exclusive to that, and I also found Voyager Hound. So. Distribute for me to talk about distribution issues and me find these two things really is kind of not a good thing to do. I don't think it's not fair. So what I want to talk about is Hasbro's seemingly forgetting about the botcon uh, fans, the 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 hardcore collectors to a degree, um, and by that I mean. Uh, we all know, having been to several bot cons, having been to TFCon, we know we are not Hasbro's main audience. We're all aware of that. It's nothing new. This is not a, oh, no, really kind of moment thing. We're oh my God. That, yeah. We are not their main audience. No. But with over the last few years, with us getting these characters like Sky Shadow and Titan's Return, heck, Titan's Return in general, Combiner Wars, which was a heavy 
collector G1 focus. The characters were getting in Titans Return, like, you know, trigger happy. And we're getting jump starters and top spin and twin twist. They know we're out there. Well, they, it's obvious they're fans themselves. So Exactly, exactly. But, the, but that's the people designing a lot of the toys for the lines. But it just seems like to me, like, like for example with Hascon, there is nothing shown at Hascon that makes me as an older fan, and I'm not just a fan of Transformers, you know, they, they announced they announced the San Diego set last week, and it's got a Leoric in it. I'm one of the biggest Visionaries fans you will find uh, anywhere, and but it, and so we know they're we know they're still targeting the collectors, but with how long it took to get any information out about Hascon, of how there's nothing really given specific for Transformers, uh, it just seems like there's nothing in their universe to replace BotCon for that contingent of fans. And I don't mean having a separate convention. Do we want a separate convention? Yeah, we probably would want to go back to something along those lines if we could. But it makes more sense from Hasbro's standpoint to have a multi-Hasbro product show because a lot of the talent can be interchanged. A lot of the designer groups can be interchanged. So I understand all they that. They have I'm more not, control over everything. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm not crying like, oh, boo-hoo, there's no BotCon. It's not that. But there's nothing to target our segment from a exclu- that we know about as far as exclusives at HasCon. We, don't, we know there's no... Uh, there's no forum. There's no collector's focus on the websites. Is there's, there even a collector's club anymore? Well, not not, not really. Not for Transformers. There's uh, they, they they had talked about at one point having online exclusives. Fun Trans- Club is uh, still clearing out exclusives that they have. Right, and they just sent out an email about an hour ago with a lot of the collectors, the the customizing class figures, the kits from those. Yeah. Uh, so, Try so uh, I wonder if they have any ratchet. So, ratchet. Uh, so again, I'm not. I'm not saying, hey, Hasbro's not made our made us a new botcon. Why haven't they? Because I know they're not going to do that. But there's nothing other. Well, I'm, I'm trying. To, I'm trying not to sound too crappy, but we're getting a lot of great stuff in Titans Return. And next week with Power of the Primes, I'm going to. I'm going to assume we're continuing a lot of G1. A lot of fan-focused characters, a lot of unique characters from the history. So we are getting we well, they know us and they are giving us product, but there's nothing collectible, nothing at a higher tier of collectivity. Does that make any sense, Don? What what it, what it sounds to me like, uh, which is kind kind of how I'm feeling about it, is it, it almost feels as though uh, they didn't like the way things were running. For X amount of years, you know, with, with different various issues and things, so it feels like they they kind of took their ball and went home. Well, no, I think I think they really, and and we talked about this several weeks back whenever we uh, talked about Hascon specifically, but I think that they think that they can do it better, and I think that what we've seen already is that they've already got to the point where they may realize that they have bitten off more than they can chew uh, i mean they're just they just not really offering anything it's like oh wow i gotta go do, I, I gotta go do that you know um well, and it's and knowing that it's just a small part of the convention you know why would i pay six seven hundred dollars just to get in the front door to see something i could literally uh, an exhibit maybe i could walk through in maybe half an hour you know <laughs> and it just it's not what they're offering. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, you know, if I watch My Little Pony, I like the show. I think it's a well done show. I'm an I'm an animation fan. I'm an, I love animation in, in most every form. So I can enjoy a show outside my target audience if it's well crafted and you see the care in making the show. I'll admit it. You know, I, I like the show. It's funny and it's well done. I like a lot of the things. I, I don't have much of a love for magic, just because I, I don't do. You know, I'm not good with card games. I suck at Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, you know, just you know, that's why I, you know, card games is not my thing. Um, but there's just there's nothing that makes me like you said, Duran. 
and they they were projecting forty five thousand people are going to Hascon. It was one it was one of the estimates that I heard. Forty five thousand. Or, that's again. This is what I heard. I don't even think salt. SDCC gets there, do they? I, yeah, that's, I, that's three three times the amount of people that come through our airport in, in a given day. I mean, so I mean, you know, again, that was again. That's what I heard. I Where did you get that, that number? If, uh, if I may ask, I, 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 I'll be honest. I read it somewhere in a thread about Hascon, but I don't remember. Again, it's just well, it could have been just a fan pulling a number out of his ass. It, it could have been. It, that could have been that it. Could be. Again, I, I haven't. I didn't. Get, I haven't done the research. But I'm just saying. And, how many people are they, are they expecting to fly into Pawtucket, Rhode Island, for a show this generic? Can they even fit that many people into Rhode Island? I mean, it's they're trying to hit all the bases, which I understand to draw a lot of people. But I, I, I'm going to use a term that we use in, that we use in retail a lot. They have a lot of width in their product offerings, but there's no depth. Yeah, because each fandom is represented. But there's very little going on except your magic and your Dungeons and Dragons. They've got a lot of stuff that we know of that's going on. So for for them, for y'all guys that do magic and double and uh, double dragon <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, that's awesome. I am so glad y'all are getting this level of representation of this Wizards of the Coast and all this stuff. That is awesome. I'm glad you're getting it. But for the other folks that we know of at this point, there just ain't a lot going on. Mm. And again, G. I don't. G. Joe. <laughs> Yeah, I'll end up like this. Me willing to pay for a Primus set and the add-on figures at BotCon was $500, just as a round number. There is not anything they have shown me that makes me want to take my BotCon money, change hands, and say, here, Hascon, make me make, me make you your, my new yearly destination. There is nothing that makes me want to go to Hascon and give them the same money that I gratefully get, gave Botcon at all. Yeah, and, and well, that, oh. and we, we we spoke about this on the Hascon show a few weeks ago, you know, and 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 it still is a a a rele- relevant topic, and I'm kind of wondering if they're ever going to bounce back from this. You know, next uh, I think this year is going to be a wash, honestly. Sure, you're going to have the people that go just out of curiosity. They may have the money, uh, you know. They they have the money. They're going to go and check it out. But I, I'm what really is the telltale thing is the staying power. Uh, and if they do terribly this year, which I hope they don't, but you know, yeah, we're, what we're, we're not wishing them ill will. Well, it's with just, what we're seeing right now is just there's not a whole lot of substance, and and that's what you uh, that's what you just said, and. I just kind of wonder, you know, I'm expecting this to fail miserably with what we're seeing right now, you know, from from press releases and what they what they openly say that they're going to offer. Uh, do we even know what any of the exclusives are for Hascon? And it's what a month or the, two away. The running theory I'm the what I've been seeing just in bits again bits and pieces here and there is it'll be the San Diego stuff leftovers there but here's something else whoop de doo we're yeah. su- we're supposed to see power of the primes at san diego so unless hascon oh they're gonna is, hold back yeah but i'm saying if, if has unless hascon is too close to the fourth quarter to get retailers excited about this product so they need to show it sooner to get the retailers ready for, you know you know it's the, for, for power of the primes, they might not be. Sh- it might can't be shown that late and be a profitable uh, suge- uh, point to do that. But if it's not from a standpoint of getting retailers ready for fourth quarter, how much faith does that show that they're not showing this stuff at Hascon? Well, I, you know, I think what they're going to do is what they typically did at Botcon. Uh, they're going to give us teasers and show us some stuff at SDCC. I don't think SDCC is going to be their premier event for reveals. Uh, they're going to use Hascon as that. SDCC is going to get what BotCon used to get. Uh, they're going to get some of the stuff, you know, hey, look at this. This is to whet your appetite. But at Hascon, that's whenever they're going to release all the really good stuff. You know, oh, it's like, you, uh, it's like, Oh, you like that? Well, this is something else that we're going to uh, we're going to uh, do for Power of the Primes. Um, I think they're going to do that. 
just to try to give themselves a little more thunder. Uh, but And that's just for the Transformers brand. I don't know if they're going to do other reveals for other toy lines. I'm assuming so. Um, but I, I honestly haven't been paying attention uh, to well, other toy lines. Not, but no. Well, here, here, here's something else, Doran. I said this a very long time ago, and a lot of people sort of disagree with me when I said this. But I still think, in the back of my head, an option that they may should have looked at was Hasbro buying FunPub, making them a, making that fun, making Fun Publications a subsidiary of Hasbro, because FunPub does have a track record of being able to run a convention. Yes, there were hiccups every year. Some some should not have existed as long as they did into their running of the show, but they did pull off the show every year fairly well and i don't think anyone really ever had a huge regret there were certain things they wish had done better but i i don't i've never talked to anyone that says that oh i regret going to that show well so they, <laughs> they should have made 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 fun pub a subsidiary within this hasbro family and using hasbro's new structure worked with someone who's done this before to set it up well, I honestly think there's a lot of variables there uh, that I don't think would work. Um, I think uh, Brian Savage himself, uh, I think he's kind of been left with a bad taste in his mouth. Uh, I, I, I don't. I'm not speaking for him. I'm just assuming, uh, going off of what he, you know, you know. I mean, he's had a, a good thing going for over a decade. And them to just say, you know what, we're going to do our own thing anymore. Uh, your contract, as soon as it's up, you're done. No, uh, no, no recourse for you know. Hey, let's renegotiate. No, nothing. If I was a businessman, I would kind of have a bad taste left in my mouth. Uh, also, have you have to you have to consider the fact that uh, a lot of these stuff. And I apologize for my printer trying to warm itself up randomly right now. Um, but you also have to consider this factor, you know, uh, a lot of the uh, toys that uh, Pete was offering at Pete's robot show, uh, in Cincinnati, a lot of those uh, figures that were for sale were Brian Savage's, uh, that he was sent from Hasbro, uh, as his, uh, his personal samples, you know, he's getting that, he's, he's, he's unloading it all. He doesn't want it. He's not a Transformers fan. Right. I don't know if he... Per- particularly wanted to pursue it plus you also have to consider uh the public image that fun publications has had with the transformers fandom which let's be honest here is not exactly stellar I, 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 oh i agree i agree I, I was just saying that because it just seems like that could have been an option to t- cherry pick some parts of it to at least get some experience in running a convention of this size, it just that just seemed like the most obvious thing was to try to use their experience in this new format. But again, you are right. You know, there are some issues with Fun Pub that you know everyone does have uh, to some degree. Yeah, I, 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 I just think that there that would be problematic if they had done that, and I'm kind of glad that they didn't for those reasons. Uh, but. I, I don't think that Hasbro was really prepared. And knowing that they've never done the the self uh, self uh, convention thing, I guess, what you could say, I mean, it's their own property. So uh, knowing that they've never done that, you can't expect them to hit the ground with all cylinders firing. Uh, you know, I think that there's been a lot of missteps already done with this show. Uh, lack of information, uh, extremely exorbitant prices. Uh, you know, th- these are things that are that are factual, and you can point at it and say, "Hey, that's not exactly what you need to be doing, Hasbro." Uh, from a fan and attendee, potential attendee standpoint. And with it, and with this being a franchise that I'm sure they're wanting to, uh, this franchise show they want to grow. They need to grab our attention, grab us by the by the toy lapels, and say, "Hey, look! Look at this awesome stuff! You can't get this anywhere else. You've got to come see this." That does not exist for this show, no. and that's my biggest concern: is what now? Yeah, and you know, if nothing else, if nothing else, there are plenty of people uh, that have 
run some of the various different shows over the years uh, that they, they could go to and that they could, uh, you know, kind of get get the uh, some advice from, you know, some some of their knowledge and experience hey, from, you know, from uh, like Don and Carl to, you know, and, and anybody else. I mean, just you got the, the people that run uh, TFCon. Uh, well, I mean, there, there's well, people out there that know. Well, what, I mean, John, Carl, and Ben Yi. Between those three, yeah, people, Benson, yeah, he, they they've worked with those three extensively. And mm-hmm. even though John and Carl are not really in the fandom anymore, I don't they think can, they're even interested in doing it anymore. Right. Oh, I know, but I'm I'm just saying they can say, hey, John, this is so and so at Hasbro. Look, we're doing this Hascon thing. Can you email me about twenty bullet points of stuff we need to be aware of going into this thing that y'all ran into? Just so we got something to go by. Yeah. I mean, you know, something something that simple. Call Ben and say, "Hey Ben, John and Carl are sending us some bullet points on stuff on conventions. Can you send us some stuff from an attendee standpoint? Since we've worked together, we know we know each other. Just stuff we need to be aware of that we may not have thought of. I mean, that that's not showing weakness on their part. It's showing foresight. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we could beat this into the ground, yeah. you know, for, uh, forever, uh, but. I think at this point, judging from what we see already, unless in the next month and a half or so, uh, however long it is before the show actually happens, unless they turn something around, I kind of think that they need to basically use this year as a learning experience and next year maybe put forth uh, a more educated uh, effort. And, you know, and, and, you know, like I said before, and and I've said this publicly, even on a Hasbro, uh, on a Hasbro forum on their Facebook page, on their Transformers Facebook page, uh, you know, I want them to succeed. I just don't think they're going about it the right way right now. Uh, You know, I I offered up some suggestions that uh, they could, uh, that that they could possibly implement. Whether or not they do it or not, I don't know. I don't, you know, I really don't care from a personal standpoint. I just hope that they do something that is offering the fans more of what the fans are looking for. You're going to be shelling out a lot of money and you're going to be traveling and taking time off from work to go to these shows or go to this show. It, you People are want to, going to make it, uh, people are going to want it to be worth their while. And that's the bottom line. I just don't. I just don't see Some how that's going to so. Yeah, I am bald and I have a goatee. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but you know, I, something. I just, I just hope. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just. I hope that you know, with them charging so much more than other cons uh, prior have, that they take uh, extra care and make sure that you know that their schedules are are on point. That they you know offer the product the way they're supposed to offer it. And that they don't let, leave any of the attendees feeling shorted in any way. Well, because uh, you know, I, I I'd only attended you know four of the Fun Club shows. I, I attended six, eight, fifteen, and sixteen. And uh, all, all things considered, you know, oh six, it was my own dumb fault. I lost track of time and missed out on Peter Collins' autograph. But in uh, in the Frank Welker experience years later, um, they were pulling Frank out of the uh, autograph session almost 15 minutes early and I just about missed him. I, I caught him as he was literally walking out of the door of the room. Uh, you know, and I, it, was, it was, you know, almost 15 minutes you know, before the time was supposed to be up. So had I had I shown up there, it's like, well, I've still got, you know, five, ten minutes. No, I would, I'd have missed him. Mm. So uh, just, I hope that Hasbro takes care and learns from the mistakes of the past. Well, you also have to consider, too, that um, there is 15 years of, well, there are more than that, uh, of yeah. Transformers Convention history uh, and, and what people have come to expect. Uh, mm-hmm. And this is something that, uh, actually, I was discussing with uh, Insane Galvatron, I believe, um, oh, great. over, the la- uh, over uh, a couple days ago, actually. Um, that me as an older collector, and maybe you guys might feel this way, uh, the same way too. 
I don't feel the same allure, honestly, to go to conventions as much as I did, say, 10 years ago, even five years ago. Uh, and maybe it's just me as an, uh, as a aging fan, uh, you know, I, I love the brand. I love, uh, I love collecting the toys, but at the same time, uh, outside of meeting the fans, uh, you know, other fans with similar interests that I have. Um, the dealer room is becoming less of a draw for me because there's not a whole lot out there that I've absolutely got to have. You know, I've owned all of G1 at one time or another for the biggest part of it. Um, you know, so there's really no figures outside of things that are coming out that are uh, that I'm actually looking for. Uh, you know, and that's the best time to look for toys that aren't, necessarily retail is going to a convention you know if you want to find a good vintage figure you go to a convention that way you can look through the choices pick it up if you need to transform it decide whether or not that's the one that you want it's a whole lot different than buying something on ebay uh, sometimes sight unseen but if you see a picture of it uh, and the item that you get isn't exactly what was represented in the picture you don't have that at, at a convention. You actually have the option to pick it up and look at it firsthand. That's what the draw of a dealer room at a convention is. And let's right. be honest. I haven't been to a panel at a Transformers convention in God knows how long. A uh, large part of that is because I've been a dealer helper and really haven't had a whole lot of opportunity to, to go to panels. But there's outside of a, a few reveal panels, there's not a whole lot of panels out there that I really want to see. Uh, a lot of the voice actors that they're getting in, uh, as awesome as they are, and I love hearing their stories, but we, we've a, lot of, a, lot. We, a lot of them are repeat uh, guests that we've had several times over. And... You know, there's been several that's that's come and gone now that they can't get. Uh, rest in peace, Mr. Wally Burr, he, who recently passed away. Um, you know, I mean, yeah, they could get some actors from some of the newer lines, uh, from some of the newer shows, say R.I.D. 2.0, uh, more animated guests and stuff like that, who haven't been to these conventions as often. Uh, but right now, your big draws are the older collectors like us. Uh, but I feel that they are dwindling. Um, you know, the last couple bot cons, honestly, they the attendance didn't seem like what it was, you know, eight, ten years ago. You know, I mean, it, it did it did peak around the the movie years, uh, you know, uh, 07 and uh, 09. But I, I, I just don't see the numbers going up there. I, TFCon USA, um, that might be different, but I really don't see it outgrowing BotCon, and that's a personal opinion. Um, uh, maybe, maybe eventually it will, uh, because it's honestly the biggest option out there uh, outside of Hascon or uh, you know other smaller shows. Well, g given enough time, I I, I think it may have. Um the potential to possibly at, at well, least I'm, meet. I'm not saying it doesn't have the potential i'm just right. saying that it, i i don't see it. i don't personally view tfcon as a replacement anymore and a large part of that is because my desire to actually attend conventions has diminished to the point now where uh you know i went to pete's robot convention a couple weeks ago and i did have fun uh but upon thinking about it i'm like you know I went there after a couple of hours of going around the dealer room and getting a couple of deals and seeing a few people. I was really ready to go home, um, mm. you know. Um, and I got to thinking, you know, I, I only drove uh, an hour, a little under an hour and a half to go to that show. I got to thinking, you know, what if I'd flown here, you know, specifically for this, you know, and, you know, if I'd felt, and, you know, and I'm not saying this is a negative about Pete's show. I'm thinking, I feel, I've kind of felt this way 
for TFCon USA, and I didn't even do the driving there. You know, I was there as a uh, as a dealer helper, and after the first day, I was ready to go home, honestly, uh, because I'm not seeing the panels. I don't have interest in seeing the panels, mm-hmm. uh, and outside of uh, a few toys, I don't I don't have the the feel to go there. And I kind of wonder how many older fans are feeling the same way. You know, um, the, the even meeting the voice actors now, a lot of them are repeat guests. I, I'm not even interested in that anymore. Yeah. Maybe it's a maybe if we look at it from a, a slightly odd an odd perspective, maybe it's kind of good that Hascon is not really targeting the botcon crowd or at least doing that to give us all a year off to sort of just. See, see, see what happens when the dust settles. M- maybe with everything being up in the air between TFCon and Hascon and all the regional shows, may- maybe it's just we just want to see how 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 everything lands after Hascon has come and gone to see what the layout of the land's going to be. And that's entirely possible, you know. I mean, I, I it's easy to sit here and, and bash, well, uh, seemingly bash Hascon. I'm I, I'm I'm trying to be constructively critical about them um, rather than just straight out hate on them. Uh, But even if they were offering something this year that I thought was absolutely outstanding, I've got to see that or I've got to do that. I'm not in a position right now to even go if, if the circumstances were right. Uh, So, you know, even if they had offered something that, that, people would want i still wouldn't be going this year but no saying what, what? that what quick question what when was it they unveiled Triptychon's leg the very first time uh want to say, i want to say like november of last year okay. maybe I was, I was thinking that might have been botcom but i didn't remember it For could sure. have been i i don't remember uh that's so long ago but <laughs> Last year. I'm 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 getting old, Jim. Don't ask me questions like this. Um, but you know, passage time is askew. And, and you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, is I'm I'm my fervor as a fan is still uh, still lit very much. Uh, if that makes any sense, I still have a lot of uh, of fan in me, um, and. and a lot of collector in me. I mean, there's still toys out there that, uh, that, you know, I see it. I'm like, I really want it. But at the same time, I'm sitting here looking at my collection, thinking of downsizing even more, uh, you know, and getting it down to maybe one or two display cases. Uh, you know, because there's quite frankly, I'm 42 years old right now. As we record this, Don's older than me, (laughs) you know, and, 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 you know, as, as much as I love transformers, I also understand that you only live once and there's other things out there besides that, that have nothing to do with transformers that are appealing to me personally. There's things on my bucket list. I'll use an example. I've never seen the Redwood forest in Northern California with my own eyes. And that is a bucket list thing for me. I would love to go and see that in person. Uh, but being as I'm, I live on the East coast, it's not exactly cheap for me to go out there. And if I'm buying toys a lot, you know, and, and everything, I don't have a whole lot of money left over. Uh, you know, I, I have a decent job, but I'm a single income household. And Don can attest, I'm sure, you know, you've, we've all heard him talk about Dononomics. Uh, you know, you, you've got to juggle things in order to be able to get things that you want and do things that you, uh, and everything. But there are some things that are quite frankly out of my reach right now and doing things like that. I would like to go to Japan and uh, places like that. That's, that's, that, 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 that's in the would be nice category, but I'm at the point now where I'm like, okay, I, I want to start doing these things and focus. And now that BotCon's completely out of the picture, I'm a little bit re- relieved, quite frankly, uh, because it frees me up to do things that aren't Transformer related. And uh, as much as a fan that I am, 
you know, I can go do other things and still be a fan. I can still pick up a toy every now and then. But, I, I you know, I don't know if I want to go. I mean, I've been a hard collector. You know, I, I, I may not have a huge collection right now, but I've bought and sold a lot of toys in my time. A lot. You know, I, I'd say if I if I hadn't sold a thing, I, my collection would probably would probably be comparable to Don's. You know, if not, uh, if not, you know, close to it. Um, I just don't feel that drive anymore, and I, uh, and that's a personal thing. Uh, and that's me being real, but at the same time, you know, I'm not sitting here saying I'm just going to quit Transformers. I'm not. It's just that I really have, over the last several years, become increasingly needing uh, needing to scale it back a lot. And I hope that makes sense. You know, I, I you know, I don't want to sound like, and, I, and I've I've listened to podcasts before where. Uh, you know, the owner of the podcast or uh, or somebody on the podcast uh, has, you know, they get to the point where they're tired of collecting or they don't want to buy as much anymore. They start hating on everything. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to do that. And I'm not, I don't intend on doing that uh, because there's still a lot out there that I love. I'm excited, you know, to see what's coming next in Power of the Primes. There's several figures in Titan Returns that are yet to be released that I'm excited to, uh, to see. I can't wait till I get Trypticon in my hands. Um, but that being said, I, you know, I want to be, I, and I've been really selective over the last several years about what I get. Um, you know, third parties really thrown something at me in the last couple of years that I didn't expect a, couple, uh, a few years back. I didn't expect, expect the third party explosion that we've gotten over the last uh you know four or five years um but that being said i i, I really want to start buying less third party and that's not because i, I disagree with third party it's that I, I just want to buy less and less you know um that third party omega from uh, fans toys uh the um terminus, terminus, terminus giganticus that yeah. thing looks so amazing to me, uh, you know, and that that kind of leaps off of one of the things that I wanted to talk about, um, you know, is uh, got into a little uh, discussion about scale. <laughs> as, 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 to me, personally, I find it a silly argument whenever you're talking Transformers. Oh, it doesn't scale right with Masterpiece or Chug. I'm sorry, did you use scale and Transformers in the same sentence? <laughs> Uh, well, welcome to my world. Right after you know, right after Botcon started, and everyone was saying, you know, oh, I don't want Star Saber because he's out of scale with this, and he's in this like, really. We were lucky to get elbows, and you're worried about a figure being t- <laughs> too tall. Well, I mean, look at the, look at the the G and Generation One. Uh, you know, you had the mini bots that were uh, you know portrayed on the screen as similar sized. Uh, robots and uh, vehicles as they were to say Optimus Prime and Sideswipe and the rest but yet the toys were so much smaller you know even in Masterpiece you know if you try to parlay that into modern terms uh, I'm sorry Megatron turned into a pistol the toy is as big if not bigger than MP10 in vehicle form you know same thing with Soundwave I'm sure that you know, a giant tape deck set next to a Lamborghini is is not going to look right. But you know, so whenever you talk about scale and Transformers, it, it totally it's a totally moot discussion. You know, it's like if you don't want to buy something because you don't think it looks right standing next to some figures, fine. That's that's your your fine and dandy. But you know, to dis totally discredit something based on scale. Oh, you know that's totally out of scale with such and such. You know, uh, you know, it, it, to me, that's the whole argument is silly in Transformers. I, I, I think it could be summed up with a uh, a quote from Age of Extinction: "Drift." I was expecting a giant car. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just one of those things that it's an argument that's going to be around for years and years and years and years to come. Uh, but 
I think the answer is always going to be the same. Laugh out loud. Bottom line, I mean, let's let's be honest here. I mean, if it looks and, and my my thing is, if it looks good with a certain figure that you uh, either want to play with, photograph, or display it next to, uh, then do it. You know, and you know, I, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm looking around, and if uh, uh, the fans toys Omega is as big as the the comparison photos that I've seen, I'm going to have a hard a hard time finding somewhere to put him because he's bigger than Generations Metroplex, and I had whenever I had my Generations Metroplex, I put him on the tallest shelf that I had, and still had to have him squat a little. <laughs> to have him in my display case. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with uh, Omega, but I'm going to figure it out. I'll be happy to yep. figure it out. Put, 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 put him beside Combiner Wars Devastator. That's, uh, that's you know, he might, I don't know. I, I don't know if he, I don't know if he'd even fit there either. But the thing is, is that, you know, um, that, that's not the main thing that's that's bothering me about the fandom. It's just, uh, but it's the fact that the argument still comes up after all these years and all the internet discussions and all the per in person discussions. Uh, you know, it still comes up, and that's another thing that leads into what I was talking about earlier that I'm wanting to scale back, is because, I, quite frankly, I'm getting uh, tired of discussing the same damn things over and over and over and over again you know it's like okay the, it's it's to the point now I, I don't even go to the message boards to discuss anything now i've been a member of T, uh, tfw 2005 since uh 2002 so that's what you know 15 years or more um you know so i'm just like i don't even read these things because i don't want to to argue the same damn things again, you know, rib fur or, uh, you know, uh, you know, mass shifting, uh, uh, animation accurate versus toy accurate. Uh, at this point, I don't give a damn. If I like the toy, I want it. Truck monkey. Yeah. I, at this point, <laughs> if I want the toy, I want it. If I don't want the toy, I don't want it. And it could be for different reasons. You know, if I don't think, you know, it's like I know when saying Galvatron says he doesn't want Omega, the the fans toys Omega because it's not masterpiece scale. It's it's too big, too big. Well, the, to you it's too big. To me it's not. It's just the right size, and I understand that. But I don't want to get into that argument again because it's a circular argument. You know, um, and, I, and that's just so. Well, kind of, kind of what what I what I hear you saying is essentially is after you've been in the fandom for a long time, and you know you you've seen things uh, over and over, you start to get a bit older. You you might start suffering from collectile dysfunction. Well, I think the better term is is like a, a soldier that's been in in the military for in in a, in, a, in a in a lot of lot of firefights in the in the military. Uh, you've been in the trenches and everything, and you come home, rotate back to the real world, and it's and a lot of a lot of people have trouble adjusting back to normal quote unquote life from military life. I mean, you've gone from a position where you're getting shot at uh, by by enemy fire, uh, you know, uh, you know, seeing people, maybe even friends die, uh, and then you come home and you got to re. re readjust to that you know it, it goes back to the old uh, old saying that you've seen in movies time and again i've seen some shit man yeah <laughs> you know I, i'm starting to feel that way in the transformers fandom you know it's like there's not a whole lot out there that's being discussed now that wasn't discussed 15 years ago on message boards or even yeah, 20 it, years ago on att yeah you i know. say it's, it's amazing that stuff on att that I remember being a part of uh, on the on the regular ATT and uh, on classics moderated for a while, and it's like we 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 haven't put this to bed yet. We we we, we we're still it talking never about will be. stuff. It, yeah. and, and to, to quote Simon Furman, it never ends. Yeah, 
Well, and, and another another thing that's uh, weighing heavily on my mind is the ever increasing prices. You know, we've we've had it from day one, honestly, since generation one. You know, prices have continued to go up. You know, we did have it really good there for a long time. You know, they stayed within a certain price range. You know, we expected deluxes to be between eight and ten dollars. Now they're like fifteen. Some places you go, they're twenty. Um, Walmart, they're pretty much twenty with uh, the last night. Yeah, more more um, more than even uh, Titans Return. But, you know, I'm getting to the point now where, you know, everybody's got their cutoff point. And I, I'm to the point now where, okay, paying 20 bucks for a deluxe, that you're not getting a whole lot of toy for the money, in my, in my opinion. Right well, now, exactly. right now, yeah, I uh, personally am because with Titan Returns, some of the Combiner War stuff, we're getting toys that I've wanted for years. So right now I am getting... My money for uh, my money's worth. Whenever I buy a Titan Returns Weird Wolf, hey, that's my character. I'm getting my money's worth. I will happily pay twenty bucks for that toy. You know, but, uh, one but one thing about that, Duron, is look at the movie toys. Uh, the movie franchise itself has always been this unique little ball of WTF, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and some things work out fine. You get great toys like Nitro Zeus. Voyager Megatron, Leader Megatron, you know, you know, and then you get some real clunkers, you know, in, in these lines as well. But they up the price on an already expensive toy, change the packaging style to better blend with the other offerings across from the Hasbro properties. Yet there is no the price increase, but there is no value increased. I mean, you've right. got. You've got you've got black series Marvel Legends style series boxes that waste a lot of room in the box. There's no bio. The toy some of the toys themselves now some of the toys look good like Nitro. Uh, I was watching I was watching a review for him uh, before you called. He looks good. Uh, Hound looks good. The I'm, I'm gonna get both versions of Megatron. But then you've got ones like Berserk, and then you've got a you've got a Bumblebee that's last year's Bumblebee. And the leader Optimus is last year's Optimus with slight changes. And it's like you're charging us $5 more across the board, and we're not getting anything for that money. And it's like the movie line is already as a hard sell as it is. And go out there, other than the hound that I had, seeing that hound yesterday that I bought, that's the first new movie thing that wasn't a one step. You or know, a, since the line launched. And, and and look what we're doing right here. And this goes back to my point that I made a few minutes ago. Oh, we're talking cool. about price increases. It's a, it's something that's that we've talked about for years and years and years and years. And but this time I think it's different for me personally. On a personal level, I think I've I've just about reached my limit, you know. I'm sure there's going to be some stuff in Power of the Primes that I absolutely won't want to pass up, and I and I'll, I'll wind up getting them. But beyond that, I'm kind of wondering what else. You know, they're reaching the end of Generation One redos. You know, uh, they're already starting to do Headmasters, Target Masters, uh, and Power Masters. After that, in Generation One, there wasn't a whole lot that I cared about. They could always fill in some of the gaps that they skipped over, like uh, Sideswipe and Jazz. Yeah, but uh, you know, outside outside of that, you know, if they if they're going to start doing more, you know, if they start the only way I think after Power of the Primes, if they want to start, you know, bringing over Japanese only characters like Death Saurus and 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 Victory Saber and uh, Legion, you know, those things like that. If they want to start doing that in and even either either Power of the Primes or a line afterwards. You know those those would be characters that um, I would be interested in picking up, but you know I I really if I, I'm I'm really looking at the price point and I'm like I'm I'm done if they start going to like you know over twenty dollars for a deluxe over thirty dollars for a Voyager over sixty dollars for for you know leader class I'm I'm like. I, I don't want to do that. 
You know, the, my desire for that toy is not that great. And and it's not a gripe. It's just that I still love the toy. I can still appreciate the toy. It's just that my desire to buy that toy is decreasing. And that's a concern for me as a collector. I don't want to stop. I don't want this to be the reason that I stop. But right now they're starting to price themselves out, uh, price me out of collecting. I'm, I'm looking at uh, what's right behind uh, Don's head right now, uh, the Cybertron Redeco. Love that like thing. You just, you just look like you just witnessed a murder there, man. You all right? No, no, no. I, I'm just, I'm just being quiet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, well, but, you're, you're like, uh, but the Cybertron looks amazing. I want that toy. But there's no way in hell that I'm going to pay that much for something that was $50 not even 10 years ago. And I, I Go will, to hell! I, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I was talking to Duran before that. I was describing him, him and Jack. There is a metric crap ton of Dynamics in that sucker. That, but between rewards points, discounts... A couple of things that I had to take back that were gifts that I did not need. So I got that. I got it down below a hundred, which is still double of what it was originally. But I'm also weighing that against: is this going to be like Metroplex that vanished after the first couple of times it was in stores, or is it going to be like Fortress of Maximus that shows up at Ollie's in six to eight months? I don't know. So i'm getting it while i have the money and i can and i can i, I can try to finagle the price down but duran's right if i if i didn't have those options available to me and i couldn't find a way to try to knock the price down to where i felt more comfortable with it it would still be on the shelf because as it sits at that price as gorgeous as it is i wouldn't have bought it but at, at that moment at that time with the rewards points and everything that i had it made it a lot more tempting than worrying about having to find it later on. And the thing is, I don't buy enough from Toys R Us uh, to get a lot of Toys R Us rewards points. I don't have a Toys R Us credit card because, quite uh, I'll be honest, my credit sucks. So I can't get one right now. I don't qualify for one either. Uh, so, you know, that's not an option for me. I don't uh, – I'm usually working on Thursdays, so I don't have an option to go get that, that discount on Thursdays. You know, so – I, I, the, my, the domino, Dononomics there, the Duranonomics, as it were, uh, would not be there for me. Uh, so that toy's out of reach. And going back to what we were talking about, the movie toys, uh, I was actually talking with the thing saying Galvatron. I went and saw Spider-Man earlier today. Uh, awesome Ooh. movie, by the way. Um, Loved it. Uh, but I, on the way back, we were talking, because I stopped in Target on the way home. Whole lot of movie toys. Guess what? Wave one. Lots yep. and lots and lots of wave one. Yeah. Well, that's why I was surprised on finding that hound, because I was not expecting to find anything but more wave one. Well, I haven't been in my local Walmart here in my town uh, in a year. Or, or not a year, but I'm sorry, a month. It's been a month since I've been in there. Uh, just really, there's not anything I've been looking for, per se. But the last time I, looked, I went in there, they had a ton of uh, the... Uh, wave one uh last night toys well, that's because that pdq most of them got yeah and <laughs> and the thing is is that all the ones that were there was like uh there's i want to say one two three four stacks up on the top riser the shelf was full and the pegs were full all of the movie toys and that whole and it, there, it's been a whole month since i've been in there because I know I know it's been a month because uh, the last time I was in there I picked up my uh, my uh, diabetes medicine prescription and that's why I was in there today so it's been a whole month they haven't moved a single damn one and this Not was a, a single one this was a Walmart what kind of Walmart do you go to where they actually stock the toys on the shelves all of them <laughs> because I got, uh, I got three close to me and all of them have empty pegs and empty shelves all the time. Yeah. Well, the uh, it's not that they're flying off the shelves; they just aren't stocking the stuff. Yeah. They don't bother. You know, the, yeah, but yeah, the 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 extra stock now goes to the top, uh, on the the top and not in the back. Yeah, and and the, they haven't moved a single figure. And I was telling the St. Galvatron uh, when we were talking on the phone. I'm like, I see these things being 
on the shelf, if not put in the clearance aisle by November. I sincerely doubt that I will ever see Wave 2 or 3 of the movie toys in my Walmart. I'm already seeing Black Shadow, and I, I never did see a six shot. Yeah, uh, my Walmart well, never saw leader class, period. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, but so, that, I, no, go ahead, Don. I'm sorry. I, I say, yeah, I'll say, Don, I, I totally agree. It's like we keep, it's sort of like if you're watching 24 hour news and something happens, how they keep repeating the same things over and over until something new happens. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the same thing we run into in the, into this into this. I'm sure all the fandoms do, but we keep going back to scale price. It's it, because there's nothing new, or at least in between bouts of new. So it, it grounds on it's ground ground on me for many years. It's just you know this is such a big part of my life for good or for ill. Yeah, you know, you know, for, as it is, but. You know, also, as a lot of people won't let stuff like for me, frenzy and the whole frenzy and rubble thing. I don't care. I really, really could care less. But I guarantee, One, twenty years ago, you at least argued the point. No, I said on ATT, <laughs> uh, unless someone can find something that I don't remember, I said, guys, as bad as the cartoon is on on accuracy, who knows. Just buy the toys and enjoy them. Just, just call them if, both Fumble. If you want to call one of them Rumble and the other Frenzy, whichever one, who cares? <laughs> exactly. I'm it's, at that like, point, you know. To me, yeah. the front uh, 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 Rumble is a, is a is a lavender one, the 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 blue one, and to, uh, and uh, Frenzy is the red and black one. But mm-hmm. some people think it's the other way around. Fine, if that's the way you want to do it, that's the way you yeah. want to do it. Yeah, it's care. not, you know, it's not the end of the world uh, if 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 it's different. It's just, you know, it's it's just it's a non-issue. There's and I've, a lot more to be concerned about. I've already thought of an, uh, you know, since this is a pre-recorded episode, I've already thought of a name that I'm going to name this episode. And if you're a Family Guy fa- uh, fan, uh, you will totally get this reference. You know what really grinds my gears. <laughs> 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 That's what's going to be the name of this episode. So, Jim, uh, but, what really yes. grinds your gears? We haven't heard what really grinds your gears in the Transformers fandom right now. Well, there's a, a, a number of things. Um, well, one thing I, I think is uh, pretty pretty prevalent would be distribution. Um, and like, like I was mentioning with with the Walmart earlier in the in the discussion. You know, it's not that there aren't product available. I mean, they're they're constantly coming out with wave after wave after wave of, of product every every couple odd months. You know, we'll end up with Top Spin and, and Quake, and then later on we'll end up with Twin Twist and I, I don't know uh, Trigger Happy or whoever. Um, but like I was saying, like my my WalMarts and even even Meyer and Target are, are guilty of this in a, in a lot of ways too. Is they will not stock product. They will have uh, like like deluxes or voyagers. They'll have two figures left in stock, and that's all they'll have. So like they'll have like five or six pegs available. You'll have two figures out of that whole section. The rest of it will be blank pegs, empty pegs, nothing on it. It's like what what kind of store, you know, doesn't stock product? Doesn't My, keep their product in well, stock? It like you, if you walk into a grocery store and you got like two bananas to choose from. You're not going to shop there. Yeah, well, you could you could actually, and that's a good point. You could that's a, that's a really good point there. A good a good analogy. Um, but you could do something like what I did. Uh, my local Walmart, um, from the Age of Extinction toys, all the way up till probably the f- whatever the the wave of uh, of uh, Titan Returns figures that had the. Uh, I can't remember what wave it was. It had the Laser Prime and the uh, Megatron with Doom Shot, the the Blitzwing. It's like two or three. No, it's it's. I want to say wave four or five. I can, I, I, yep. I don't I don't memorize the wave numbers. So, uh, whatever wave that is, uh, right, it was from a <laughs> from the beginning of Age of Extinction until then. I stopped going into my Walmart because simply for for the reason that. They did not stock 
transformers at all. Usually it'd be like a case once in a while, you know, uh, uh, might go up. And you and if you caught it, great. But, you know, usually if they put up that case, uh, it'd sit there for several months and not move because people had given up on the store. I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, they still, to this day, haven't had a leader class toy in my local Walmart in several years. They have not. They don't even have a shelf space for them. Uh, the uh, the. So so did, did you have to go to uh, CapturePrey dot com? Yes. Yeah. Actually, I have. <laughs> uh, okay. Titan uh, Titan Masters. They don't even stock those. Right. At all. At well, all. It, period. Yeah. It, and, and, and a great example of the distribution issue, how many people out there still have not seen a shuffler wave? You know, I've seen four shufflers since since it came out, what, four months ago, five months you know ago? What, you know what's crazy? My local Walmart, like I said, does not even carry Titan Masters. They carry Titan Returns, they got Deluxes, and they have some Voyagers. Uh, but they don't even carry Titan Masters. My local Kroger... Is overrun with Titan Masters. Really? Yes. Are, are, they, are, are, are there any shufflers? Uh, last I was in there, it was the wave before Shuffler. Yeah, uh, it's the uh, one with Fangry and stuff like that. Yes. Um, because yeah, because it looks like it looks like Japan is getting the Ramhorn version of that, but not Shuffler. Yeah, but huh. but the thing is, is that uh, I actually know uh, a couple people that work at my local Walmart. And uh, they were friends of my girlfriends, and we was at their uh, their house one night for uh, for a, a grill out, and they were sitting there talking, and I and they were talking about the Walmart over here, and I and I spoke up and I said, I know you all work there, but it sucks, and they looked at me like what, and I'm like, yeah, it sucks, you know, I'm a transformer collector, there's none on the damn shelf, so a couple months later. We went back over there for another grill out. One of them spoke up and said, yeah, uh, I, I don't work in toys, but I went back in the back and looked, and there were several cases of Transformers sitting in the back room. They had not even stocked. They had not even stocked. And it made me wonder how much of that product was not even in their system anymore. You know, uh, and they couldn't even put it out. Wow. Well, you know, the, the kicker is the, the the primary gimmick of Titan's Return. The one of the focus fo- focal points of the line is the Titan Masters, the ability to change the heads. And they don't the carry them. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Yeah, that, that that'd be like you know selling a baseball game, but oh, there's no bat. We don't we don't stock the bat. Uh, it's like sell, selling video game consoles, but not stocking controllers. Or no 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 play. no games. Yeah. No games. It's, it's just, and again, now, now, in defense of Hasbro, this is really not all their fault. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's, there's blame for, to go around everybody, but Hasbro's, Hasbro's thing is they sell it to the retailers. It's the retailers that needs to get it out to their stores. Well, mm-hmm. So, so there, but, but again, look at your wave one from Hasbro. Only two Voyagers. All those Grimlocks, all those Optimuses, and then you had all mo- all the Legend stuff is repaints, mm-hmm. uh, and then m- and then the Deluxes. There's one, two. There's two new Deluxes in uh, out of a wave of four, yep. so it's like they do have they do have some blame on the fact that you sent this much product as the launch, but it's not that much difference. Again, well, a lot of it is it's, not. The retailer, and I can tell you this from experience, uh, because I happen to know a a, a retailer, an online retailer, uh, by the way. Um, for example, and here's here's something else. Uh, some of the larger retailers, such as BBTS and and uh, um, uh, Entertainment Earth, actually, have been shipping like. Some of the uh, some of the recent wave Titan return stuff have have been shipping. Some people are actually uh, ordering the stuff and getting it. Okay, smaller retailers haven't even gotten the solicitations yet to even put them up for pre-order. 
What the what the hell's going on with that? That's a Hasbro thing. Okay. That's Hasbro uh, because their middleman or their their marketing or whatever whatever it is that gets gets it to the retailers. And the thing is, is you're cutting out your retailer, your your smaller retailers, and leaving it only to the big retailers. Eventually, what are they going to do to the big retailers? You know, if the small retailers eventually just stop carrying your product, because hell, by the time I get the solicitation for it, everybody wants it's already got it from a bigger retailer. You know, that's a problem. That's a big, big problem. And I don't know if a lot of people realize that. I know uh, that uh, I've seen several messages from from collectors uh, to, uh, for example, Captured Prey. Um, you know, I've seen several messages. You know, when are you going to start carrying this product? Uh, so and so is already shipping it. And his answer, quite frankly, is. I haven't even got the solicitation for it yet. I can't offer you something if I haven't got the solicitation for it. And that's the honest to God truth. And it's not fair to the retailer. You know, how do they fix that? Well, you know, another if you look back a couple years ago, uh, RFC ran Operation Beehive, where we basically went to the point where we went and got a lot of the bumblebees off the shelves for donations to all the various toys around the holidays, N- not only to give the kids some toys they went, might not normally get, but to get all those bumblebees off the shelf. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, and then when you've got a, ca- a case of eight and there's four to five bumblebees in it, I mean, you know, you're going to have some case bouncing issues there as well. I asked, I asked the Hasbro reps at BotCon. You've got a stormtrooper in your a stormtrooper in your set with the prime Viacon, and he's one per case, and there's you're still getting four bumblebees from the wave before. It's like, don't you think there's enough bumblebees out? He says, well, we have to go with what's the, the better name. Yeah, but if you go to any store and see peg cook after peg cook after peg, but they're not going to do that, Don. You know, yeah, that. I know, the I know. Same thing that it's killed just, Thundercats. And the 2000 X He Man. All yeah. they did was He Man and Skeletor, and you had one non of those care one Tila, one Man at Arms, one Disco Skeletor, whatever the case may be. <laughs> Disco Skeletor. Well, two, his, two or three Lionos, two two Tigras, one Panthro. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. Panthro was awesome. But you know the and, and chops. You know, and 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 smaller retailers. And then I'm not saying it it happens with every single wave. But, you know, whenever it's hit and miss, uh, you know, um, I know for a fact uh, one of the big retailers out there was able to put up pre-orders for Titan Returns Trypticon a full month before other retailers were. How's that fair? You know, and uh, but the thing is, is I know I know Capture Prey was able to put up... Um, pre-order for something other a week or two before another retailer that's out there and i'm not going to mention names because i don't want any hard hard feelings so i'm not saying that they get screwed on every single release but whenever you favor one one store to another you know it's it's not it's not right and i don't think i I think that's something that hasbro needs to investigate you know okay our distribution is not quite what it should be what do we need to, to fix this in order to get our product into the hands of the people that we are that we are targeting they're not doing it and i don't know if they even care quite honestly but uh jim was uh, what else was it that is grinding your gears well um i think they've got too many cooks in the kitchen they're, they're they're spreading themselves too thin. I mean, I understand they want to carry they, they want to uh, cater to the the different you know age demographics and all, but I just I worry about them spreading themselves too thin because if you think back, you know, I, I don't know, fifteen years ago, let, let's go with uh, heck the original robots in disguise for instance. Okay, that was a a decent line. You know, you had your deluxes, you had your megas, you had your 
It was a filler tracks. line, yeah. Right, but, but even so, you had decent amount of product, and you had a lot of diverse product. I mean, you had the build team, you had the bullet trains, you had the spy changers, you know, uh, Prime, Magnus, and all that. You know, and there there was always something going on. You had the Combaticons, or Decepticons, whatever you call them. Um, but now you've got a situation where you've got uh, rescue bots, you've got ro- Robots in Disguise 2.0, you've got uh, Generations, and you've got movie stuff. You know, I'm just, I'm wondering, it's like, is there so much out there that they're... Well, they've, it's oh, been oh, like oh, that oh, for a while, though. Be, I know. I mean, you've had, we, it, even back whenever like we had Universe... With, Go ahead. And I say, it almost feels like they're competing with themselves. It's like, you know, you got a, a let's say, I don't know, 16, 17-year-old guy who works as a cashier or something, right? Who still is into Transformers in the younger demographic. Okay? He goes to, you know... Walmart, Capture Prey, wherever, he can choose to buy uh, Nitro Zeus, who I, I love that he's a headmaster, or he could buy, you know, uh, Quake or uh, Twin Twist. You know, uh, or at the same time, what, what if he has a little brother? He's going to want to buy a rescue bot. So, I mean, I don't know. I, just, I worry about the, if there's too much product being pushed but not enough interest to meet with that. And if that might not be a factor in why certain things aren't being stocked in stores. Well, let me ask you this. Somehow, what's that? Let me ask you this. Uh, we all know that back in 2007, whenever the live action movie hit, uh, awareness and interest in the Transformers franchise virtually exploded. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of what we have on the shelf today is a direct result of the, of the income from that. Uh, but let's, uh, you know, we discussed it, you know, a, a few weeks ago on the podcast here that the live action movie, uh, the last night is tanking at the theaters. Uh, yes. you know, uh, right now, well, as of last weekend, Wonder Woman that has been out for over a month. Mm-hmm handily beat the last night in weekend sales Mm -hmm. you know and that's not a good sign granted wonder woman was a great movie in my opinion uh but whenever you have a recently released movie you know some two two and a half weeks after its release and it's uh, it doesn't even come within 10 million dollars of a movie that's been out for over a month that that's alarming right there do you think? I, I believe. Well, my I, question is: Is do okay. you think that the declining interest in the movies <clears throat> also is translating to declining sales in toys? Does I think it might be related to some respect, but as far as the the movie itself, the the success of the film, I think has to do with the quality of the story and the quality of the characters and the the viewers' attachment to them. The, the development of the character. You know, how do, well do we get to know them before they're just introduced and then killed right away? How often does that happen in the, in the Michael Bay films? I, I know I'm not trying to be critical, but I really feel that that is a major hindrance to that line of films. Because, I mean, you, you start out, you've got Jazz, Bumblebee, Ironhide, Ratchet, and Optimus Prime. Okay. By the second film, uh, I'm sorry, but the first film, Jazz dies. Second film, who did the second film? Let's see. The, I forget the second film. Let's not worry about that one. <laughs> it was a hot mess. Writer's strike and all that. Uh, third film, we lose Ironhide. Fourth film, Age of Extinction, we lose Ratchet. Who do we have left out of the original cast of the Autobots by movie five? Bumblebee Optimus and Prime. Prime and Bumblebee, the ones that everyone is sick of seeing over and over and over. I mean, Sideswipe, they introduced Sideswipe. They could have easily, instead of killing him off, introduced, you know, bring in a new character, heck, uh, Cogman even. I could see that as having been some form of a Sunstreaker if they would have, you know, went that route. Because, I mean, you got a little bit of a similar personality there. But point being is, like, you introduce a character... And then you discard them and throw them away. Yeah, like, but how does that t- uh, translate to your original statement? Is th- uh, in that 
they're spreading themselves thin with the toys. You know, I mean, uh, well, you, my you question went into the into the movie. Yeah, is, I mean, is, well, uh, uh, I'm uh, I'm asking you to correlate. I mean, well, you know, uh, if you if, don't if, care if about it, the character, you're not going to go out of your way to buy necessarily that character. You're going to go for Bumblebee, Rainbow Bumblebee, Malibu Beach Bumblebee, maybe an Optimus repaint here and there, and then you're going to go get, uh, you know. Uh, I don't know, Unicorn Bumblebee or something, you know? And you're going to get burned out, and you're going to move on to bigger and other things. So what you're saying is that because of all the the lack of diversity in the lines, that people aren't buying the toys because it's all the same thing over and over and over again. I, I think ultimately, I guess what I'm what I'm trying to convey is they're putting out so much in the in the form of shallow characters, not really developing those characters. Well, uh, let's well look at that, let's look that, at Combiner uh, Wars as sure. far as toys go. Combiner Wars was a, a good eighty five percent repaints and redecos and very slight retools of mm -hmm. essentially the same toys. Right, I, I, I can look around sure. my room right now. And probably count 30 different, and I don't even own all the combiners anymore. Uh, but I could probably count, uh, you know, 30 different toys that are essentially four molds. But, but those, are, <laughs> those, are, those, are saying, those are characters that have already been established. They have a storied yeah. history. You, you care about them. You, you're but there's not a lot of diversity there, let's be honest. <laughs> you know, it's the seeker syndrome, you know. It's sure. ex essentially the same toy, just in different colors, over and over and over again. But it, it, in most of those cases, though, they changed the, the molding of the toy enough where it was safe to market it as a separate toy, and it didn't necessarily feel as though you were getting the same figure. For yeah, instance, you com except compare, compare, compare Wild Rider, or whatever they call him, Breakneck, to, I don't know, uh, Prowl. Okay. Yes, they have the same base mold, but there is enough of a mold difference in them and between them. It doesn't feel like the same toy. I don't know. <laughs> or or I, look, look, look at Swindle. I can and transform Brooke. Nose Cone and then pick up. Uh, pick I'm up, jealous. Pick up Brawl here, and I'm like, it's the same toy. I'm exact jealous. Same I, toy. I still, I still need a Computron. I know where we can get one. My birthday's on August. Just saying, you know. I know where you Anybody, can get a Computron. Wants to pipe on me. <laughs> um, but no, I, I was just I, I think it all it all interconnect, interconnects because if you don't care about the character because you know they're just a, a throwaway character just to have their name flash on the screen for a second and then they're dead, Nitro Zeus, um, or, or Onslaught or something like that, then you're not as apt to necessarily want to go out and buy that toy. You're going to want to focus on the Bumblebee and the Prime. However, if you're a retailer, you're probably going to get sick of carrying always, you know, Optimus Prime and Bumblebee constantly, because then you're going to end up. I honestly, with, don't think the retailers well, care what characters it is, just as long as it sells well. They, well. they do if their if their shelves are clogged with the same product. I don't they, think they, they, they even look at that. Our smoke I don't think they look at that that particular st statistic. They just look at it as okay. We have this product; it is not moving. It doesn't matter if it's Optimus Prime and Bumblebee only. They don't look that that deep into it. It's the, okay. We got a shit ton of this product. We need to get rid of it because it isn't selling. You know, now, and, now they're not even stocking it to sell. Yeah, it. they're not even stocking it. But the thing is, is I think what uh, what it boils down to, and, and this is going back to your original argument in that okay, uh, you know Hasbro has got RID 2.0. They've got uh, the last... Excuse me, I've got hiccups here. I uh, made the mistake of having I Taco Bell before I ate, or before we podcast. <laughs> uh, but, that's, that's the wrong end, Deron. Yeah. Uh, but they've got the last night. They've got RID 2.0. They've got Titan Returns on the shelf. they got Rescue Bots, all aimed at different demographics, yet... You know, they're not really focusing on any one particular line. Uh, is 
and we re- we're not really privy to the numbers. You know, what sells in one area might not be selling in another. And I'm just right. using my, my local area, my local Walmart as, a, as an example, you know, of being overclogged with wave one last night stuff. I'm sure there's other places in the, in the country or in the world that are very much the same way. But then there's other areas like yours that aren't stocking, uh, aren't stocking shit. Mm-hmm. You know, and then that you, you've got a, at the same time, you've got other lines that they don't have the media support until the lines already clear the shelf. Combiner Wars. Uh, look, look, look at Combiner <laughs> Wars. We didn't get that until the line was pretty much dead, and we were moving on to Titans Return. No, uh, no. I think not only did the uh, did the Combiner Wars show not do as hot because of overall quality, uh, but I think it also didn't help the fact that people had already finished Combiner Wars. Essentially, <laughs> we were already starting to get, or, or very close to getting Titan Returns Wave One. Smash nope. blur. Yeah, yeah, nobody gave a damn about about it anymore. It's like, all right, we're already done past that, and you're starting to show us a cartoon now on, on a go on the Go ninety app at that. Yeah, yeah. So on a platform that not everybody has access to. Nor you know you let's be let's face it, you had to work at it to get to mm-hmm. it. You know, it's not a channel that you could just flip on on TV uh, casually and find. You had to go to your either go to your computer, go to the Go ninety. Uh, uh, website or pull it up on your Verizon phone and watch it that way. You know, right. that I'm sorry. Netflix, that's, Netflix that's too puts complicated. Some amazing stuff. Just saying. Yeah. And I know it doesn't sound like much, but let's be honest. You're once you get beyond basic channel flipping. Okay. Sit down in front of TV, flip it to channel, you know, something uh, on a channel that nearly every market has. Okay. Mm. Once you get beyond that, I'm sorry. It's too complicated. Your delivery method is not not right. Well, as as far as network television, I think uh, for the for the older uh, older demographic, I think that's pretty much a, a, a dead medium. I mean, you've still got RID 2.0 on there, but uh, as far as something like you know Titans Return or, or uh, Combiner Wars, I don't think that would work well on there. Uh, I look to, for example, like what Netflix did with Castlevania. Okay. You know, it was only you know four episodes. Four so episodes far for, that for was raging, <laughs> but the quality was amazing. You know, Combiner Wars, what was it? Eight episodes, which equates to what eight, was it? Eight, eight five it, to it, ten it like minute forty-five episodes. minutes total, or yeah. something like that. Not, not quite an hour, but even so, you know, and not enough story there to really get anything going. Right, right, and a lot too much happened too quickly. It was rushed. But, you know, if they were going to do it at all and keep it limited like that, I think a better medium would have been something like Hulu or Netflix, which is becoming more in demand now than your standard network uh, television anymore. Uh, Because people are always on the go. They're going to want to pull stuff up on their phones. That's going to be the avenue to go with. And you can do it on your TV if you if so. So desired. Well, sure. Yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of uh, dish receivers, uh, cable boxes, and things can utilize those things now. Netflix and all that. So the the it, it's available to you. You know, but the the Go ninety thing, I just I can't help but wonder if that was necessarily the wisest of ideas. Uh, I could say with without a uh, without a reasonable doubt, it was not. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, there was a uh, there was some aspects about the Combiner War show that I did enjoy. I did. I, I thought the voice voice acting was was adequate. Uh, there were some great voices there. Uh, I just don't think the overall story was on point. The star screen was spot on. Yeah, that was uh, the closest to Christopher Collins I I never heard. Yeah, and shout out to Frank Todaro there. Uh, yes. fan, fantastic job. Frank. Um, uh, yes, <laughs> um, but I, I just don't think the story was on point with where it needed to be, uh, and I think the biggest damnation about the Combiner Wars show, in my opinion, too little, too late. Scale. Yeah, yeah, scale problem. That Combiner in the end with Starscream and all that, just, you have Titan Devastator as the left leg. It's like, really? Mm-hmm. Itty bitty leader class is a torso. It's just... I tried it. It didn't work. It, it looked horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like your face. Right. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> Again, scale, you know. Don, 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 Don is withdrawing, so. Uh, no, no. I, I just, I'm just, you know, both of y'all are raising really good points. It's just, I think 
people for the movie, I think everyone is so tired of seeing the movies that could have been so much better. I mean, the first one, the second one, well, whatever, third one, there's a learning curve. But this curve is taking little bitty increment baby steps. From now, I'm doing, I know you had issues with the last night. For me, I think it was actually the for a again with the caveat for a Michael Bay Transformers film, it was better made than anything we had gotten except for maybe the 07 movie. As far as you know, uh, for various reasons that we talked about during the pot that last podcast. But I think people are still just so, so tired of seeing. They've seen movies that can be a summer blockbuster like this, but be so much better. And these movies have not changed that much in in ten years. And so the interest is waning because been there, done that, literally bought the T-shirt. Why are they going to buy the toys for characters? Berserker isn't even in the movie more than thirty seconds. But he took a wave one slot. Why? I mean, why? Why not? Why not do something with a different character that was actually in the movie longer than him? Yeah, like, like I was saying, you, you don't care about the character, right? And again, we this again, we're cycling back to the same things we've said ad nauseum every movie. Yeah. But it's Let's but at, again, uh, in, in this one case, it's a, it's still a, it's still a, it's still a valid point because the movies should have gotten better. And they haven't, and look, people look, look are tired. People uh, are tired of crap. Yeah, look, look, look at uh, what, what is it, Infernicus, the Combiner. We practically had the Terracons on screen, for for lack of a better term. I mean, they were right there. They did nothing with them individually. The combined form, even though it wasn't very big for a Combiner, but the combined combined form was just used as as a throwaway. Well, hell, the the center body part, the character that forms the center body part, doesn't mm-hmm. turn into anything. He's a robot, individual robot, and then he turns into the torso. Doesn't even turn okay. into a monster. There, there's, there's there's no alt mode for it. No alt mode. No. Really? Really? Basically, he's a he's a rock lord. He turns into a rock. That's his alt mode. It just looks like a torso. Yeah, so, he, t- he turns into a torso <laughs> and and a, and, a, and a robot, and that's it. Uh, no, uh, is it's basically they took <laughs> the the limbs from from Abominus from Beast Hunters Abominus right. and re uh, redecoed the uh, those, and then the uh, then the center body they made a whole new tooling for it. This is how I sum it up: when I look at my GoBot shelf and my Machine Robo shelf. And I see the Rock Lords Dinosaur Combiner, and that's a better toy hmm. that we're getting 35, 30 plus years after the fact. That's still a better toy. Something is wrong. Yeah. But, you know, we, we, we've, we've talked about, you know, a lot of these things, uh, you know, over and over again. And, but they're, uh, they're it just goes to show you. How old arguments are still current arguments. Um, you know, a lot of what we said tonight are very, very, very old arguments in this fandom. Uh, they, uh, the the names and and the the circumstances may change as far as uh, what's being dealt and who's been uh, who's involved, but the conditions aren't different you know uh you know we're still getting distribution problems price uh you know are they spreading the product too thin you know this is uh, you know jim's argument i've uh, i've been hearing this since you know at least universe 1.0 you know because at that time we had universe 1.0 we had uh what was else what else was on the shelf then cybertron Universe 1.0, you're talking about 2003. Mm-hmm. You're going to be looking at uh, Transformers Dinobots, uh, the, the latter half of Armada, early waves yeah. of Energon. Yeah. So, uh, Animorphs, I think, were still lingering on the shelves, as well as the G1 mm, reissues. I don't think Animorphs. So all, all, alternators hadn't quite made it out yet, but Unicron had. But, you know, we were, we're sitting here basically arguing and, <laughs> for better t- uh, lack of a better term, bitching about the same old things. 
that we've been not only us but the fandom in general uh, on forums all over the place for the last 20, 30 years. You know, I, I really don't see things changing. And for me as a collector, it's it's really starting to wear on me. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think anything will kill my love for the giant robots from the planet Cybertron, you know. Uh, you know, uh, every time I see a Decepticon or an Autobot insignia on a car when I'm di- driving down the road, there's still a little uh, a little bit of joy in me seeing that out there. You know, I mean, it's tear, like... Tear runs down your cheek, you know. I mean, I think back to whenever I was a kid, if I had seen an Autobot or a Decepticon insignia on somebody else's car, I would have thought that would have been the most awesome thing ever. And mm-hmm. to now see, it's it's almost commonplace, quite frankly. I know here in the town that I live in, it's hardly a day goes by that I don't see somebody with either an Autobot or Decepticon insignia on their car. Even people that aren't even really fans per se, you know, I, you know, people. It's it's the end thing to do, you know, uh, and, and I, I I take a lot of joy in that because. The, the franchise is something that I love to its core. I, I love the toys. I love the characters. But, you know, I'm, I'm, to the, I'm, I'm getting to the, to the age where I just feel like there's... I want more out of my life than just Transformers. And that's, that's more of a personal level type thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, you know... Uh, I think it's a natural progression, um, but you know it doesn't I, mean that I'm going to go out and fire to... sale everything tomorrow. <laughs> but I, yeah. I think one way to look at it is as the brand, <clears throat> the brand itself is about change, and it always has been. Mm-hmm. But even so, how the brand itself must change over time, so too must its fans. Well, you know, and I'll, just I'll like, look, like when when you're when you're you know, quite a bit younger, you know, you you like different aspects about the franchise, whether it be the cartoon or certain toys. Whereas after so many years of you know seeing the same things over and over, your interest may maybe shift to some other aspect of it, you know, or some collectors and fans lose interest altogether. Sad to say, hmm. but and uh, I have. I mean, we've all overall, seen that. We've seen fans that, you know what, screw it, I'm done. You know, mm-hmm. and they sell everything and get out. You never hear from them again. You know? Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't see myself, myself doing myself that. To believe, I still can't bring myself to believe that, you know, people that do that sell everything. There's always going to be one, at least one figure that has that oh, sentimentality. I guarantee you, if I was to guarantee. sell, if I was sell, to sell off my collection, or the biggest part of my collection. Well, if I was to sell my collection and just stop collecting altogether, I guarantee you I could still fill uh, at least one or two detolls with all the figures that I would be keeping that I could not f- bring myself to uh, to get rid of. You know, either all because they have weird wolves. No, no, well, there's not that many weird wolves. <laughs> first of all, uh, but I I would keep all my weird wolves. But then there was all, there would also be all the toys that have sentimental value to me. My uh, the the few that remain from my original collection. Uh, certain people have gifted me toys over the years, uh, and they have a certain meaning to me. I I couldn't part myself with those certain versions of characters. Certain <laughs> characters, i.e., Weird Wolf, the Dinobots. There's no way I could part with those toys. You know, so even if I was to sell out Lock, Stock, and Barrel, you know, as, as most collectors would view it, I would still have a collection. It's just that I wouldn't be actively collecting. You know, I would still, uh, I would still actively watch the cartoons. I might read the comics more. I would still go see the movies. But, you know, like you said, you know, things, the hobby changes. And I see more of, you know, the younger fans, like, like you know, I'll use the podcast here as an example. Sergio, Jack, to a lesser extent, Michael, Swift. Um, you know, they all, they all, you know, they, they've got 
a, a lot of the old arguments to us, they may be old to them, but not as old as they are to us. They, mm-hmm. they're, they're not to the point where they're tired of reading it. And I, I, I see them getting interest in things that, uh, that really fire them up. Sergio, uh, you know, for the lack of better, of a better term, gets a hard on for masterpiece stuff. You know, every time there's a, a, you know, a new masterpiece revealed, he is all over that, you know, and there's, and, and I love that, you know, uh, for an older fan, like myself, I don't always feel that fervor, but I'm saying that you know it, it, it joys me to see younger fans continuing this hobby, this great hobby that we have. You know, yeah. well, Dur- well, Dur- I, I, I'm gonna sum it up by by quoting a line from Doctor Who because I'm, I'm a Doctor Who fan. Uh, when Matt Smith was going to regenerate into Peter Capaldi's Doctor, he said, "Times must change, and so must I." And I think that's really relevant that, you know, well, as you said, we have to change with the times, with the fandom, and not be stuck in this cycle of sameness, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's something that I, I'm sure a lot of fans out there think of. And, you know, we for the last hour and a half going on, well, we're about 20 minutes shy of two hours right, uh, right now. Um, you know, it's old arguments, but it's still relevant and it's still, it's still in the forefront of our minds. Cause you know, I asked at the top of the show, what, what's bothering you about this transformer franchise and what, do, what comes to our mind, age old arguments that are still relevant today. I don't see that changing. You know, it's like the old adage goes, you know, uh, the more th- uh, the more things change, the more things stay the same. You know, uh, you know uh, the faces may change, but the 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 circumstances do not, and uh, that's that's the Transformers franchise. So I'm going to pose this question out there to you listeners and you viewers, um, whether it's an old argument or even a whole new argument. You know, how do you feel? What bothers you about the Transformers franchise? right now whether you know it's something that the fans are doing the toys the you know hasbro uh what what whatever it is what really grinds your gears uh you know you can tweet it at us at tfylp on twitter or you can go on to our facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash tfylp let us know on there we would love to hear from you you guys have any closing thoughts uh, just don't, don't let it get you down. I mean, we're not trying to be negative. It's just sometimes, no. you just, sometimes you just have to say, this is stuff I wish wasn't an issue anymore. And maybe if more people know about things, they don't realize that are these cyclical issues. Well, it always helps to air it out too. And that's yeah. what we've been doing here. You know, yeah. uh, Massey agrees. He agrees. <laughs> But you know, I mean, uh, we're we're sitting here and we're talking. I mean, you know, I've I've said multiple times, I'm still and I'm always going to be a fan. You know, it's just that, and there's nothing wrong with one. And we've we've had episodes on this particular thing, scaling it back, when to do it, how to do it. Go back and look at those. You know, you can go to tfylp.com and search collecting. You know, and I'm sure there's an episode on tfylp. We've done 250 plus, you know, uh, episodes of tfylp. So. There's something out there that, that you know, that, that you can listen to from this show that that helps you cope with things. You know, whether you're, you're uh, whether you are a new fan or an old fan like Don, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm you know, starting to see, starting to see some gray in his hair there. You know, what, what, what hair? What, what hair? When, when, when did that happen? Your Homer Simpson hairdo there. Uh, but <laughs> go. Well, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, my, I, I got, I got the Homer Simpson here because I'm waiting for the, the credit card bill for that guy behind me right there. Yeah. But you know, I, I'm interested to see what the rest of the fandom thinks of. You know, maybe it's something that we talked about here on the show, but uh, maybe there's something entirely different that is on your mind about the fandom. It's like. There's nothing, you know, there's, you can have 
something that bothers you about something, but you can still in, uh, find something in it that you enjoy a lot. And Transform Transformers does that just to a T, in my opinion. I mean, there's there's a lot to love about this franchise, but there's also a lot that bothers you. You know, whether it be distribution, uh, you know, the the arguments that we get into as fans. You know, I mean, sometimes the hate that I see about certain characters and certain toys, I'm like, I'm sat there and I'm like, why is there so much hate for this toy? It's, it's, it's a decent toy. It's not like it's Armada Sideswipe or something, you know. <laughs> Which had a cool gimmick, by the way. Yeah, it did have a cool gimmick. And it had a decent car mode. And I was lured in by that car mode whenever I bought it in store. And then I got it home and I wanted to throw it up against the wall because it was horrible. <laughs> it was a horrible toy. I'm sorry, it was. <laughs> but, you know, tweet it to us at TFYLP or tell it to us on our Facebook group. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, we beat this into the ground, so unless you guys have anything to talk about before we log off? Just uh, just a quote that comes to mind, which I feel may be vaguely relevant to our uh, topic, is uh, from, our, uh, from everybody's famous, uh, famous, geez, from everybody's favorite boss monkey, transform and transcend. Mm, the seeds of the future lie buried in the past. We'll yes. see you next yeah. time and, on and, TFYLP. Yeah. <laughs> and that DVD, DVD set needs to be buried on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you, everyone. Good night. Everybody. <laughs>